Welcome to what? Wellness FX and BioWad. Uh, we're joined here today by Brian McKenzie of CrossFit Endurance. Uh, who just came off an awesome time at the CrossFit Games. Uh, Brian, you had several uh, uh, athletes there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I had three, uh, three guys, three, two guys, one gal competing this weekend. Sweet. And how'd that go? Uh, it went really well. I mean, we uh, some weren't as happy with where they ended up, but I was generally happy with how they all finished um, in finishing. Um, you know, everybody made improvements from last year, um, and this year was a much different beast. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the games were really interesting. I was there last year, and just the sheer uh, velocity, I guess, is the best word that came to mind of, of what's going on. But the, just the level of competition and the quality of the athletes and how they exceeded uh, areas. I mean, you must have come away with that uh, with just a ton of fuel for thought. Yeah. Um, you know, I uh, it, it's it's been interesting to watch the progression of the games from the last few years, and um, it, it's definitely becoming this. Yeah, you're going to need to be the highest level athlete to be here. Uh, with, not that it wasn't back then, but it's. I mean, to compete in the CrossFit yeah, Games yeah. four years ago is not to compete in the CrossFit Games totally today. Different. Totally different story. My friends of mine were. I was listening to a couple of friends of mine on teams, and going in, they said, "Man." We're 20% better on all of our PRs, one rep maxes, our workouts, we're a better cohesive team, and we just got smoked. I, w I would yeah. I, I would almost identically be able to say that with each of the three uh -huh. athletes that made it to the games, that they were at least between that 10 and 20% marker, better than everything they had had going into it, you know, from the right. previous PRs of everything, and yet, you know, well, a couple of them made jumps up but just to be where they were at was uh yeah and, and you know what's interesting to me is uh and i'm pretty new to crossfit so maybe two years but in talking to people it's this kind of evolution where uh four or five years ago you can get by on raw athletic talent and have some holes in your game and this yeah. and that and then the holes in the game raw athletic talent disappeared last year yeah okay and then going forward, it's getting more and more professionalized, uh, you know, more and more people devoting time to that, hiring coaches, uh, the whole deal. Yeah. And so it seems like the next frontier to me is going to be, where do you optimize yourself when you get these 1% to 3% incremental improvements uh, from whatever source? So you can focus on things like efficiency uh, and lifestyle and being disciplined and whatnot. But at a certain point, you push your biology using conventional methods and uh, our, our listeners know that what we're all about is uh, we follow Lord Kelvin from 200 years ago is if you can't measure it, you can't change it. So we're all about measuring. And uh, what we thought we'd have Brian do talk about today is CrossFit endurance and kind of this next frontier. Um, well, I appreciate you having me on. And I um, I like the whole measuring process as well. Well, you're all about measurement. That's, I mean, that's everything I've we're about. I've seen your sign-up. It's like, uh, all right, tell me all your times and how you do here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent that over to you. Yeah, it's actually even gotten more detailed. Like, yeah. we even have a psychological profile now, kind yeah, of. Absolutely. Which uh, I believe is very, very important um, and, and was a very big learning experience for me this last year. Um, and we also are, you know, I require a, a nutritional, like I, I do a little bit of a nutritional panel. Like, I want to see what the athletes are eating. That doesn't tell me everything. But that moves into your neck of the woods, which is where we have something. And it's like we were discussing earlier. You know, we can all go to the doctor and we can get our blood panels. And we can get these things done. But how how much do you actually know what's written on that com you know that computer printout of what you know, of what you see? And you know, unless you're actually a doctor and right. know how to read that, you don't know what's really going on. But secondly, you're not actually seeing everything in the way that it works and what's actually really under that hood of the athlete. And um, from what, from my experience, not only my own training, but from my athletes' experience in, in progression and, and evolving our program, um, which is largely an endurance-based program, but what we found was that when we were training a lot of just the long, slow distance, traditional sure. ways, um, we're meaning just running, biking, or swimming for long periods of time, not including a whole lot of strength conditioning and, and staying on some sort of a car high carbohydrate diet and uh, your traditional thing that we weren't, it, it didn't last very long. It wasn't something yeah. that, that was sustainable for the athlete or we were just not as healthy or performing the way that we wanted. You know, from to. a health standpoint, that almost sounds like you're kind of designing uh, from that philosophical standpoint, almost like an active diabetic. 
yeah, take the take take the right. at, take right. the right. athletic <laughs> part out of it, and uh -huh. you've now got this diabetic this setup for for being a diabetic, right. right? You know, and so I I started we started toying with things, and we started it messing with. Uh, more more skill based training, teaching people how to run more effectively, ride mm -hmm. more effectively, swim more effectively, because these are largely not taught. It's usually just about increasing volume or time. Um, and we started introducing strength and conditioning, yeah. and we found that you actually could not have a whole lot of volume coupled with strength and conditioning mm -hmm. because the body just couldn't recover in time. But yet we were starting to get better and better results with our athletes. Yeah. So with that. The whole paleo or the, you know, eat like the caveman thing is around and, or eating clean. And, you know, we started toying with the diet as well. And um, a long story short, what I had on a blood panel kind of got reversed on a blood yeah, panel. Yeah. And what our athletes were seeing in the same way was it, it was the same thing across so, the board. So this is really interesting, too. It's part of the evolution, right? You're over time you're, you're focused on the training but then you say wait 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 there's part of the athlete's life i never see so how did you sleep last night yeah okay or have you been cheating on your diet yeah. i mean shockingly people will like tell you one thing and do another yeah uh, well like uh, oh yeah or or, oh, or or not tell me anything yeah they you know, like they're supposed to be right? telling yeah. me and like i've got a, you know i've yeah. got a little stable of athletes and it's like how many how, how am i supposed to keep can up you with believe this? this goes on yeah well yeah, yeah. It, 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 seriously but it does and it's like a lot of athletes get away with because they've been athletes for so long and they were so young. And, you know, I, I've, I've listened to uh, a lot of people talk about nutrition, but uh, Dr. Eads, I, I listened to, who wrote Protein Power and um, in 96, I believe. But I, I was listening to him speak and he said one of the key things that I've taken away is give it time, give it age, it, it, it's going to catch you. And that's the bottom line. And and what totally we understand. And I was a different, you know, we were different athletes. A lot of the athletes I was coaching were getting older, <laughs> as we all do. But we were, you know, not in our 20s anymore. We're in our 30s. Right. We're in our 40s. We're in our 50s. And we're starting to see these problems. And it's not as easy to deal with, right? And so things were starting to catch us. And we see a lot of these athletes that as they were younger or in college or what they were doing is they can eat a lot of crap and get away with it and still perform because everything's, they're, they're young. And, and I mean, it's like you see kids and ki most kids don't want to eat a whole lot, right? Right. And they eat a lot of crap. But how are they growing? How are they doing these things? Well, their hormones are off the charts. So the well, hormones you know, are still functioning. Age, everything they eat is actually building something critical for longer term. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And the hormones are still working, yeah. right? And so they're just flaring off. They're building, you know, and then all of a sudden all that stuff starts to take, you know, and what we've seen or what we yeah, thought yeah. was it just starts to taper off. And now that crap starts to catch up with you and what's going on. And yeah, as an athlete, you can get away with a lot of things is what we've conceptualized is that, you know, in, in our experiences that we got away with a lot. But as soon as that was over and when things were done, it, why was I feeling like crap? Why yeah, was say, I not, this, why was I not recovering? Setting a stage for the out year, say 2013 coming up. It's, yeah. it's again, it's all these holes are, with this excess energy are getting filled in and it's be, it be coming down to like one, two percent of incremental improvements is what's going to win it. And what's interesting, you're also kind of doing this whole lifestyle approach yes. in a way. Yeah. Uh, so you just introduced uh, a, a new, um, I guess, supplemental, uh, uh, well, describe it for Yeah. Me. So because I've actually we, been using it for a week. I, uh, you gave me a bag. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's been pretty great this week. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's great. Yeah. And, and it, um, I was tired of eating the way I was eating and then thinking or just trying to not live on the same principles as when I was training. And I don't think the way I eat is a diet. I mm -hmm. think of it more of a, as a lifestyle. Yeah. And, and this is what we're all trying to strive for. It's more of principles. I, I'm living by some principles. Right. And it was as if because I trained, I got to toss all those principles outside, <laughs> out, out the door and, you know, I'm... I can now just cheat away and mm -hmm. uh, or even have some cheat meals during the week because I train so hard. Yeah, yeah, I deserve it. I deserve this. Yeah, right, like, right. you know, um, and uh, don't I, I, and I, I, I fall victim or I, I fall prey to this as well. I'm, I'm not victim, I do the but same thing, yeah. yeah, no, we all do it. We're it's right. human nature, right? But um, I wanted to stick more to the game, and so we started playing with things, and we were working with some other people on on, on some products, and you know, things just didn't work out, and we were there were some things missing, and um, so we just you know, I decided with uh, my business partner Doug Katona that we would um, and, and another friend that we would just start toying with things ourselves. And so we started ordering products uh -huh. and we started 
ordering high quality protein, some medium chain fats. We knew that the medium chain fats were very quickly used within training. Um, it was something you could use. Um, the protein can still be used as, as, as some fuel, even though it's going to act. It, it so both kind of pre and post, right? And, and during. Yes, yeah. pre, post, and during. Yeah. But what we also found is that you know there was just a missing component when once you got out to maybe three hours, right? Or maybe you were doing multiple workouts in a day, training for the games, and we, yeah. there, there was just a not enough occurring within. For that, for that product. So what we found, what we ended up doing was we, um, which is something that's been in the bodybuilding community forever, um, is a waxy maze. And, mm -hmm. but it's a high, it, it's an HDP waxy maze, which is actually a resistant starch. Um, and using, used in not a huge quantity, in a smaller right. quantity, it actually does not wreak havoc on the gut. Um, and it takes about two to three hours to start dropping glucose. So, so it's very persistent. Right, right. It, it, yes. It, it doesn't just get like... No, flushed it's not flushed right, into the right. system. You're not going to get a huge insulin response. You know, um, actually, you probably get more of a, a, of an insulin response from the whey protein than you yeah, get yeah. from this. Um, and so we were toying with the mixtures and, and just playing with it and experimenting, which is what I like to do. Um, you know, draw. We're, we were uh, pricking ourselves. We were looking at our glucose levels, everything, you know, just yeah. seeing where... where Everything was going and inevitably came up with the product of Free Fuel, which is a uh, it's twenty percent carbs, twenty percent protein, and uh, there are 40, 40, 40, 20. So it's forty percent carbs, forty percent pro protein, and twenty percent fat. Um, in that, it holds twenty grams of carbs, twenty grams of protein, and nine, almost ten grams uh -huh. of. Fat. So, so it's really cool. Fats. So I'm a big label reader, uh, and I won't buy anything that has artificial flavors or colors in it. And so it's cool is that uh, this product is also not going to put downward pressure on your biology by having to work harder and process this stuff out. Nothing artificial in it. Uh, I'm a total label reader, as I said. Uh, it has a little bit of sweetener in it with stevia, but non-glycemic, so it's... You know, it's uh, very it's minimal. And great, trust me, if yeah, it was not product. in there, I've done it without it. <laughs> trust me, I can do it. But I know that the right, public right, is right, not going right. to do it. It's yeah. kind of like being on, on like it, it one, yeah, it tastes like it would taste stuff. like burnt coconuts, yeah, you know, yeah. and just be like, all right, I'm over this real quick. Yeah, there's very few people want to suck that up every day. No, <laughs> you have to be truly dedicated, yeah. and that's fine. We were actually toying with the idea of actually having it without. The yeah, it's a nicely balanced product, though. So uh, congrats on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that commercially available yet? Yes, or? it is. Yeah, okay. threefuel.com, which is actually three f u three l dot com. Uh -huh. Or you can go through, um, you can, I, I believe you can go through the CrossFit Endurance store. Cool. We'll post up a link on, uh, when we uh, tag this video. Appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, great having you here. The next segment, um, we're going to have uh, Brian and one of our really just awesome uh, practitioners, Dr. Justin Mager, sports medicine doc, really works with a lot of CrossFit athletes, and uh, he and Brian are just going to walk through kind of uh, a basic biological review. Thanks.